Morning, y'all. Morning. We're just doing all his words. Mm. Behind. You just got because right. How do you get because right? Big elephants can't always use small exits. It's true. <laughs> Thanks for the responses to yesterday's video. Big responses um, and a positive one. And lots of people, nearly everyone, understanding the points I'm trying to make, which is good. Just a few comments, which I have all got good intentions, but lots of people are asking why can't they use like Trackman or GC Quad for like club data while on the course to help these pundits. Well, it'd be very easy for, how did you get, did you get that one right? No. You spelt it, yeah, that well done. It would be very easy for the coaches to get information to their player, wouldn't it? If you think about it, sick foul, hit a shot, face to the path, angle, set, measure, Eddie, goes Eddie. on telly, got it, goes that one. Goes on telly, they'd then be able to get a message to their player, wouldn't they? Which wouldn't really be right if you think about it, after. So today's video, I'm gonna do a swing, show you how I would do a swing. You've seen them before, but hopefully from yesterday's video you understand the points I'm trying to make even more. And also, I'm looking after a sick boy. Boy is off school, yeah. Boy is sick, off school. Mm -hmm. So I am looking after him today. Let's take you and just you to school. It's a cold one. Yeah. It's school run time. Right, school drop off done. Let's look at a golf swing. Right, today's swing is a great one. Let's just run it through. Um, there's lots of good shapes, lots of good patterns. There is a big divot and what looks like a duff shot. I mean, who doesn't hit a duff shot? Now, I'm just gonna bring it back to the start. What we see with this player is we see things where the club looks like it's going a bit more behind him. I would say the cameras, so looking at yesterday's video, we talked about camera position. He's either aiming to the right, but I think we're directly behind the ball, not the player. So that will make the club always look like it's going further back. But that club is a bit more behind his hands if you were straight down his hands line than what you would... I don't care where that club goes, to be honest. What I'm trying to say here, in not the best way I've said something before, is that sometimes that club can get what looks like behind you early in the swing because of the way you're turning rather than that you've just dragged it back, which I'll show you what I mean as we go on. Then we see a backswing that looks relatively neat, quite a big body turn. Top of the backswing position looks relatively neat, using his hips a lot, all looks good. But then we do see a big stalling on the downswing, like lower body just doesn't want to move, upper body doesn't really want to get opening. We're going to see low point happening a little bit early, which we do, and there's your fat shot. So we're going to talk about the way this player is turning. He looks very aggressively like he's moving off the ball on the backswing, and this is something quite close to my heart because it's something I've struggled with all my life. Struggling not the best word to use but it's something I've done all my life and I play with which is why I can catch clubs uh, shots out the bottom of the club a little bit. He's doing similar to me but just bottoming out too early. So we're going to talk about trying to get his downswing improved by trying to improve the way he turns on the way back because this player's got a lot of good movements. He should be hitting a lot better shots than what we see in this video. Right. First drill, I'm gonna use him there, the other mark, my shadow. So if I make a backswing where I turn a long way to the right, so I turn off the ball if you like, so if the ball's around, say where this club is, and I turn, but at the same time I lean to my right, this is why we see the club starting to go this way. Also what happens on your downswing, you've gotta make both of those turns up, so the rotation plus the bend that you're putting in. Or, what I should say, is you should be taking that bend out. Let me show you what I mean. So I start bending forwards. If I just turn and keep that bend in, what happens is I move a long way to the right. So start leaning forwards. If I rotate but keep this bend in, so this bend forwards, I start moving way off the ball. So what actually should be happening on your backswing is you should be turning, so turning, taking this bend out, which is now facing this way, because you've turned, if you think about it. So I'm bending forwards. Now if I turn bending forwards, I'm more that way, aren't I? So good players are actually turning, taking this bend out, so standing up, but at the same time they're replacing it with what we call 
side bend. So they're balancing the three dimensional turn. So simple way of thinking about this, because some people will get what I just said and some don't. Don't matter if you don't, the ones who did or the ones who've just kind of had a light bulb moment, that's great. And if you don't understand it, this drill simplifies it. Watch this. So I'm gonna pick the bit of my fence my head is on. I'm gonna make my backswing. And at the same time, I'm rotating my body and hips like you're doing, but I'm keeping my head on that strip on that on my fence so i have a similar issue my backswing i tend to want to pull off see how my head moves to the right now that's not a massive problem as in depending on how much you pull off you're pulling off a lot also it doesn't matter if you make that up on the way down which you don't look like you do in your video i certainly struggle with it as well think about the way i hit the ball i'm very good with my driver pulling off like this makes me have low point early which allows me to hit up at my driver and i get optimum numbers for my average speed but my iron shots which are fine but i can hit them a little bit out the bottom of the club so i need to make sure i don't pull off too much because if i do low points early and i don't hit down at it enough and i don't get the right strike i get a bit low because i'm almost coming up at the ball sometimes with my iron do you see what i mean so this is something as a kid i practice lots and still do now if i'm playing i haven't played for a bit and i've got an iron shot i really try and make sure i turn on top of it because i tend to turn off it like you do maybe catch it a bit thin a little bit off the toe get that weak strike for you bottoming out early is interpreting itself as hitting the ground it might be a one-off but if you see this pattern a lot this is a great drill using your other me to try and get your rotation of your body a little bit more over the ball while still letting everything turn. Let me know if this helps. If my putter turns up today, I'm ready to go. Let's answer your questions. Hi Mark. Hey. Um, last year you helped me big time with my golf swing and I changed my grip and it works perfectly. Nevertheless, now my golf pro keeps on telling me that in the back swing, as you can see here, my club is in the wrong position or the club face points in the wrong position. Nevertheless, on the down swing, as you can see here, the club is in a good position and I hit target most of the times and I have a quite functioning golf shot. So my question to you is, would you change this or work around this? Cheers, Brian. So for me, if you're hitting target and you're hitting functional golf shots, then I'm not sure why you would have a lesson. Having a lesson, you need a question. The question could be, why am I functional? So having lessons when you're playing well isn't the problem as well, but it's to find out what you feel is doing well to see if you can then kind of recreate those things, so not changing. Yep, I'm home. So for me, always a change. Something that's different has to be quantified. So if I'm gonna ask a student to change something, I want to then see the results. My changes are delivered on patterns of humans over years of teaching. So today's swing, I see lots of different students hitting the ground first. I see many of them going this way too much, not all of them. I try and change that for them. And if the percentage of success outweighs the percentage that can't do it. So what I mean by that is if like 90% of the students that I change the way they turn, they start hitting it better, I kind of write that down in my head, in my little black book in my head, of some of the most important things that try and influence people to change their performance. But it's based on experience. If you want to change a backswing position of the club face, the question should always be why? What are we fixing? What is it changing? And the only way you will know if it does fix or change anything in your swing, so results wise, and I say this to all my students, is I say I want you to try X, Y or Z, and they say, do you think that will make me better? And often, I'll say, not sure until we try it. Do you see them? That's the key. I tell them to do something, so measure some facts, find out what we need to try and improve with their information as well. Give them some sentences. If they make a change, measure, and then prove to them that the results are better. Different shape, longer, higher, low, whatever we're going for. So question for you, stroke your coach, is why do we need to change that? That's what I would say. Right everyone, here's a different one. 
My dad is the captain of a golf club this year. Kind of why he's done that, I don't get. I kind of do. It would never be for me. But anyway, captain has a charity every year. He's asked me to help. So I'm now going to ask you to help as well. So I've got some prizes to give away. His charity is the Children's Hospice Southwest. He tells me about this place, to be honest with you. It almost brings you to tears when he tells you about it. I've got kids. It's an amazing charity. Go and look it up. Children's Hospice Southwest. Now, I've created a page, I'm going to put the link in the description down below, it's Everyday Hero is the website, someone online told me to use it, you know, it's one of those donation pages. If you make a donation between now and next Tuesday, you're going to be entered to win a prize. Now, lots of the companies have got involved, which I'm really grateful for, so the first prize, and this is a cool one, I hope... Who wants to win my set of Mizuno MP5 irons? These are the irons I gamed last year and maybe the year before. So they've still got my dots, all the dirt on from around the world. It's a five iron to pitching wedge set. Obviously they're spec for me, so you could get them bent to you or you could just bung them on eBay and get some money or whatever. But whoever donates between this today, Tuesday, and next Tuesday, I will pick at random one winner who will win this set. And each week we're gonna try and give some prizes away. I've got my old driver three wood, got Callaway, let and go. I've got golf balls from tight list. I've got loads of stuff. Let's race, look, let's do some good with this channel. Let's do some good with all we're learning. The prizes won't be given on who makes the biggest or small donation, anything like that. It will be random from whatever you can spare. All donations are big because we're all precious with our money and it means a lot to us and we all work really hard. But let's just give a little to some people who are maybe really struggling and need it, hopefully, a bit more than us. So, link down below, follow that link, give a donation. By giving a donation, you are entered to win, thanks to Mizuno, my MP5s. These have been all around the world and played at some of the best courses. Just a bit of a fun prize. All right, bro. All right, coach. Oh, that's happening. Oh, baseball. Oh, that's just happened. I don't like it when that happens. I just don't know how to stop it. Don't pick it up. Well. You say that, I'm not sure if I even did that, you know? Well, it would still find its way in front of it. <laughs> it would just roll in front and perfectly stop right there. Oh, not again. You need to, like, recreate that. Uh, the tiger with chipping on six So the last drill I want you to do because the shadow on the fence one or on the floor just works really well. This is a variation you could do this indoors as well. So I've got these lines on my rug here in my living room. And what I'm gonna do is put this club on my uh, chest, make some turns where I try and line the shaft up with some of the lines on the ground. And you're gonna see that that allows me to feel like I'm turning much more on top of the ball. If I was to do your movement, this way, I mean I can line up this with the lines of the floor here, but I'm miles away to do that. I have to turn so much when I'm keeping that bend in. Most people would keep it more a slight angle to the lines on the floor than kind of lining it up. And then another variation, if that one doesn't like your lemon, just put the club straight up your spine. I've got the head of the club between my knees. Turn your body trying to get the head of the club kind of somewhere over your right knee. You'll see that's me stacking my turn more over the ball. Your action's gonna be so much more this way, where your upper body, the grip end of this club goes way outside of your right knee, club inside your legs still. When it comes to body turn changes, body turn movements, for me, I can see it in my head as I turn differently. Even though obviously I can't physically watch it when I'm hitting a shot, I can see I've got this visual in my mind of what angles look like and then in turn feel like to me. Often with amateurs, they get very mixed up between turn, bend, side bends. They can't identify any of those. Then in turn, they just go with whatever movement feels natural for them. Someone hitting the ground early, bottoming out, hitting duffs like this player, they're gonna have to change the way their turn more often or not, hit better shots. If you can get them to identify how they're turning, feel it, get a mental picture in their mind so they can take it to the course of the practice range, that's how you really improve them. Right, me and Orla, we've escaped into town. Mummy's home ill now, Milo's ill. There's only three of us left standing. We're gonna go and have a bit of fun in town, aren't we? <laughs> See you all tomorrow, post comments down below. Remember to, if you want to win my irons that I played for last year, um, let's get giving to the charity for my dad's captain charity. Um, let's do some good, shall we? See you all tomorrow.
that's still not come, hope it comes tomorrow.